How did the Spartans become the legendary warriors of ancient Greece? How did they train? And what was different about how the men of ancient Sparta were raised compared to how modern men are raised today? Because of the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 BC, in which a small force of Spartan soldiers stayed behind to fight to the death against a vastly larger Persian army, the warriors of Sparta have long been famous for their military prowess and tenacity. Even today, the word Spartan conjures up an image of an amazingly fit, skillful fighter, indifferent to pain and fear. A man's man. Spartan child-rearing was primarily focused on creating strong, disciplined warriors who would serve the state. According to the ancient Greek historian Plutarch, who wrote several centuries after Sparta's heyday in the 400s BC, Spartans began developing soldiers shortly after birth when male infants were evaluated by Spartan elders. The well-built and sturdy children were allowed to live, while those who were deemed unhealthy or deformed were left at the foot of a mountain to die. In contrast, today's children are mostly born in a safe, sterile hospital environment. Modern technology and medicine help to reduce the chances of any child dying regardless of physical challenges. No child is left on a mountain to die. Spartan boys were separated from their parents at the age of six and made to enter an extremely arduous state-sponsored education known as agogi. The objective of the system was to instill discipline, a sense of duty, obedience, and resourcefulness in the children. By the time these children reached 20 years of age, military service dominated every aspect of their lives. These warriors were dedicated to military service and placed the state above all, including their families and their own desires. Male Spartans were allowed only one career opportunity, soldier. Modern child-rearing places a stronger emphasis on a well-rounded education, emotional development, and individual fulfillment. Physical fitness and discipline have taken a back seat to a child's intellectual, emotional, and social growth. Education, career opportunities, and personal happiness are emphasized more than physical training. At age seven, Spartan boys were turned over by their parents to the state, where they were organized into companies that lived, studied, and trained together. To make life even tougher, Spartan boys were fed a meager diet. One purpose was to keep them slim, which Lysurgis, the founder of the Spartan system, believed would make them grow taller. But the boys' hunger was also intended to embolden them to steal food from gardens and other places in order to make the boys more resourceful in getting supplies and to make them better fighting men. But to make sure they learned cunning, boys who were caught stealing were whipped. Such harsh punishment was a prominent part of the Spartan training system. The Spartans even turned it into an annual ritual in which the boys tried to steal cheese from a temple altar, which required them to evade guards armed with whips. To toughen them up even more, Spartan boys were compelled to go barefoot and seldom bathed or used lotions so that their skin became hard and dry. For clothing, they were given just one cloak to wear year-round to make them learn to endure heat and cold. They also made their own beds from plants that they had to rip out of the ground with their bare hands from the riverbanks. According to Plutarch, as the young Spartans grew, they were required to exercise more to build their bodies. Spartan youth had to present themselves for regular inspections, and boys who didn't look sufficiently fit were flogged. In addition to foot races and wrestling, their sports included a particularly brutal contest in which two teams would try to drive each other off an island by pushing, kicking, biting, and gouging their opponents. In comparison to Spartans, many of today's children are turned over by age seven to be raised by an electronic entertainment device. Their living conditions are generally comfortable. A typical day begins by rolling out of a comfortable bed without straightening it because mom will take care of that task. Breakfast is made and delivered by mom. There is an abundance of food, so the child doesn't eat it all. They are certain there will be more whenever they want some. However, the nutritional quality of the food is low because it's mostly processed food rather than fresh whole food. So children are increasingly overweight at a very early age. Children attend school, and when they come home, they play video games, watch TV, and generally aren't exposed to any discomfort or demanding physical tasks. 
They are provided many choices of clothing, food, and entertainment. Survival is not a concern. If they are engaged in sports activities, the focus is more likely to be on participation rather than victory. When it came to discipline and punishment, Spartan children were subjected to strict discipline and harsh punishment to toughen them up. Physical discipline, such as flogging, was not uncommon as a means of instilling obedience and resilience. Modern parenting leans towards more compassionate and less physically punitive methods of discipline. Strategies like timeouts, loss of privileges, or discussions about their behavior consequences are more common. There's a greater focus on emotional and psychological well-being. At around age 15, Spartan boys entered the second stage of training. Their physical training is increased in preparation for becoming soldiers at 20 years old. During this stage, they were allowed to participate more in the social life of adults. Modern boys also begin to try to behave more like adults at around 15. There are typically no parental or societal demands placed on them to become more physically fit. Some will enter the workforce at 18, and others will continue in the safety of the academic world well into their 20s. Any further improvement in physical development and mental toughness will be the result of their own choices. Spartan society had distinct roles for both boys and girls, with a strong emphasis on male warrior culture. Boys received intense military training, while girls were expected to be physically fit and bear strong children to contribute to the state. Today, the roles of boys and girls have evolved significantly in most modern societies, with a greater emphasis on gender equality and opportunities for both boys and girls to pursue their interests and aspirations regardless of traditional roles. The way children were raised in ancient Sparta was characterized by a strong emphasis on physical training, discipline, and military readiness. Whereas today's approach to child rearing places a greater emphasis on well-rounded development, education, emotional well-being, and individual fulfillment. Spartan warriors were made, not born. They are proof that our training can create a warrior. Training can create a champion. Statistics show that in our modern society, more than 70% of both men and women are overweight or even morbidly obese. And that is what has been produced by our training. Training produces a result, and the way you spend your days is training you to become your future self. What are you training to become? <laughs>